So I know I'm late to the Scoob party of reviewing this movie, but I think Scoob is one of those movies you really need to sit on for a bit. I mean, don't get me wrong, I know Scooby-Doo isn't one of the most complicated properties out there, but the movie Scoob is such a mixed bag of stuff that I couldn't really pinpoint what I liked and disliked about it. At first. I have so many mixed feelings. So I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I actually like the idea of an animated Scooby-Doo movie. Maybe because that's where he belongs? But I'm not gonna lie, the more trailers I saw of this movie, the less interested I became in it. From the funny sounding characters, to Blue Falcon dabbing, to the Fortnite character whose name I completely forgot about because she's pretty much worthless in this movie, it just kept looking worse and worse for me every time. So why did I still want to watch this movie? I guess because in the end, Scoob is a kid's movie, and I expected it to be. I knew what I was getting into when I sat down and watched this movie. I wasn't gonna get How to Train Your Dragon 3 or Spider-Verse. I was gonna get Scooby fucking do. And that's pretty much what I got. In some ways. There's actually a lot of really good stuff in this film. The animation, for example, is actually pretty fantastic. It's very fast, very springy like Hanna-Barbera used to be. The original designs actually translate very well to the 3D environment. And I especially love all the little references to Hanna-Barbera here and there. Like, look, there's the Hex Girls. Look, there's Jabberjaw. Look, there's Pebbles. Oh, that's actually really cool. I'm glad they did that. There's also a few really funny jokes here and there throughout the movie. Some that actually made me laugh very hard. And are you Harry Potter? I'm Ruth Bader Ginsburg, obviously. Which house is she in? Hufflepuff? She's a Supreme Court Justice. Oh, Slytherin. I also cannot believe they actually went and remade the original opening like that. They didn't have to do that, but I'm so glad they did. It was actually really cool. At this point, I was thinking to myself, all right, this movie's actually pretty good. But everything kind of starts going downhill when Simon Cowell shows up. Whoa, man! It's Simon Cowell! In the Guys! Guys! Now, to be fair, a celebrity cameo is not that far out from Scooby-Doo. If anything, if you know your Scooby-Dooby lore, then you know that they do this sort of thing all the time. And I'm not talking about John Cena or Kiss, I'm talking about fucking Phyllis Diller and the Globetrotters, okay? They've been doing this for a while, but that doesn't stop this scene from being cringeworthy as all fuck. Seriously? Simon Cowell? Like, what is this, 2007? I think Justin Bieber would be a more relevant cameo than Simon fucking Cowell. And this joke kind of sums up the rest of the movie for me. It has the spirit of a Scooby-Doo movie trapped under a shit ton of corporate schluck. Pop culture references, pop songs, modern talk, it is everywhere in this movie and it never seems to stop. But I think the worst problem doesn't just come down to being dated. I think it all comes down to the story and how it honestly has very little to do with Scooby-Doo. And when I say that, I'm talking about Scooby-Doo in general, not the actual character. Like the actual character has a big stake in the plot and everything, but you know what I mean when I say that. If the first 10 minutes of the movie showed me anything, it's that there is this kind of heart that was put into the movie that really did want to be good. But when you have seven different writers, then chances are it's gonna get seriously bogged down by a bunch of worthless crap. I mean, seriously, why else would they replace the original voice actors like Matthew Lillard and Greg DeLacy, who have been playing these characters for nearly two decades at this point? Shit, you have the original voice of Fred on your cast, but you don't actually have him voice Fred. What is up with that? No, just get fucking Zac Efron to do it. I'm sure it's way better. Like, really? Better than the guy who's been doing it for 50 fucking years? Whoever thought it was a good idea for Mark Wahlberg to voice a giant douchey man baby has obviously never heard of Will Ferrell before, has he? Or John C. Riley, or Jack Black, or Chris Pratt, or literally anyone else. Outside of Frank Welker doing Scooby, the only real good voice in this movie is Jason Isaacs' as Dick Dashley. He genuinely fits the role and sounds like he's having a lot of fun with this character. Honestly guys, Dick is probably the best part of this movie. Yeah, I know what I said, what about it? But I think the biggest problem this movie faces is the fact that, honestly, 
It's not a very good Scooby-Doo movie, if that makes any sense. There's not much of a mystery to this movie. I mean, there is one, but it's not really focused on that much. Plus, there's no twist on who the villain is. That's like a common staple in Scooby-Doo. But no, in this movie, they just kind of make a joke about it, which is admittedly funny, but this honestly feels more like a Blue Falcon movie, if anything. There are just so many different subplots going on in this movie. Like, half the time, it's pretty hard to tell who even the main character is. Yeah, the movie's called Scoob, that's probably so we don't get confused. First you have Scooby and Shaggy getting kicked out of Mystery Inc, even though they weren't kicked out, but for some reason they're acting like it. Then you have Blue Falcon's daddy issues because this is actually Blue Falcon's useless, honestly kind of unlikable son. Yeah, I'm just not a fan of this Blue Falcon. He's just too cowardly and stuffy for my likings. Yeah, the movie makes it a joke and everything, but it's not that funny, and plus his redemption at the end feels really unearned, almost like he didn't really learn anything in the end. Then you have Fred and the others looking for Shaggy and Scooby, you have Dick Dashley's thing with Muttley, you have Dino Mutt and Fortnite Girl having to deal with Blue Falcon, and to top it all off, you have another subplot with Shaggy and Scooby involving their friendship being tested, and it just feels really forced. All over a fucking collar that Scooby is wearing. Yeah, there's a scene where he has to take it off for a second and it really hurts Shaggy, but I mean, Scooby could just put it back on in like two seconds. But for whatever reason, Scooby just doesn't put it back on. Yeah, he's wearing that new suit, but nobody told him he couldn't wear it, so why doesn't he just put it back on? This this whole entire thing could easily be fixed. They're both they're both making a big deal out of something so trivial and stupid. But whatever, we gotta have the best friends fight each other like the first live action one did. Oh my god. Yeah, say what you want about the live action movies, they still felt more like Scooby-Doo movies than this one does. They both had an actual mystery to solve, they both actually were about Mystery Inc. And even though both haven't really aged well and aren't good movies overall, they also have James Gunn on them. Like, seriously, you can't go wrong with James Gunn. But Scoob feels more like Scooby-Doo presents the Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe. This whole thing feels like it was trying to start something bigger than it actually was. I mean, just look at the movie's poster! There's eight characters on this, and they're all the focus of the movie. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't really that bad of an idea, since Hanna-Barbera has always been a connected universe, so doing it in film actually makes sense. But it feels like we skipped a few movies when it comes to this one. First, we need an actual Scooby-Doo movie, then we need a Blue Falcon movie that deals with his worthless son, and then we need a movie for Captain Caveman, who was also in the movie, but was only there for like 10 minutes. Also, he's voiced by Tracy Morgan? What? So yeah, Scoob is a bit of a mess and not a very good star for the Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe. And yet, despite all of its problems, I can't bring myself to really hate this movie. It's obvious that a lot of passion and hard work did go into this movie, but at the same time, I knew what kind of movie this was going to be when I put it on. I think there's a difference between a movie that's made for kids and a movie that thinks because it's made for kids, it doesn't have to try. Norm of the North is a good example of the latter, but I don't think Scoob falls under that umbrella. It was just a bunch of different ideas being sandwiched into each other with very little thought put into what worked and what didn't work. I think one or two writers really love Hanna-Barbera and wanted to do their properties justice, but the rest were just interested in a paycheck. However, with everything being said here by the end of the day, Scoop isn't a terrible movie. It's not even that bad. By the end of the day, it is a pretty harmless movie, so it's not even worth getting that worked up over. Plus, my expectations for this movie wasn't really that high to begin with, and I don't think anyone's really was. I think everyone just expected a movie that would be... fine. And I think that's the best way to sum it up. It's... fine. It's not terrible. It's not great. It's fine. There ain't much else to say outside of that. Scooby Dooby Doo or Scooby Dooby Don't Watch It. The choice is up to you. Whoa, man! It's Simon Cowell! In the, the shadows!